They call it the Asus ProArt StudioBook Pro 16 OLED. And really, let's get straight to it. The standout feature of this laptop is the dial, one of Asus' latest innovation for creative professionals. Now, to me, this stands out way more than the secondary screen they put on the ZenBook Pro Duo. I thought that was a great innovation, but the practicality of it didn't really stand out for me as a photo editor and video editor. The dial, on the other hand, really made an improvement in my workflow. And let's just jump right into it. And then later in the video, we're gonna talk about the performance benchmarks and those will be coming up. And we're gonna talk about them for each of the models that are available for this laptop. And you actually get this laptop in three separate models. You can get it with a Xeon processor, an Intel Core processor, and a Ryzen processor. So we'll talk about that during the performance section. Jumping right into the dial, I was impressed with the out of the box capabilities of it. Inside of Photoshop, my big concern was brushes. That's what I found really annoying over the last decade in my career is I always had to set up some kind of makeshift quick brush adjustment shortcut hack in my laptop, okay? So I always wanna have access to the opacity. I always have wanna have access to the hardness of the brush. And then of course the brush size. This was transformational and I'm not over exaggerating. In regards to innovation, this will make a difference in your day-to-day -day workflow. I was able to quickly jump back and forth between adjusting the brush size, zooming in and out of the actual project I was working on. I was able to adjust the hardness and adjust the opacity all with the click flick of the dial. It, it just really blew me away. At When I first got the laptop, I was like, okay, this is gonna be kind of chintzy. And then I started using it. And I was like, oh my gosh, this thing makes a real difference. Okay, so Photoshop, big win right off the bat, without a doubt, even right out of the box before I even started putting my own customizations into the wheel. I've been using this for about two to three weeks testing it. Now for video editing, that was another area that I thought, I don't know if once I send this laptop back, which I really wish I didn't have to send this laptop back. Once I send it back, I feel like my workflow will like, you know, stoop again uh, because the wheel was so effective. Now, this is something similar to like, I don't know if you've ever heard of the monogram. They're like the little external consoles. You, know, you have like a wheel and different click buttons. And with video editing, that is just so helpful. So what I usually do in regards to video editing is I try and set up my keyboard shortcuts in my workflow to where I don't have to move this hand, okay? So as I'm using the keyboard, I'm like keeping this hand locked in right here and I have like my cut, delete key, I have like the, the cut tool and I just have a lot of my shortcuts here so I don't have to move this hand and I just keep my hand on the mouse and I'm doing my cuts and I'm not moving my eyes off of the screen, okay? So that is how the dial really helped out because I'm able to cut, move the timeline, keep my hand here, and I'm not having to move around and do a bunch of adjusting with my hands, especially if you have a mouse. If you have a mouse, that's, that's great as well. Now, I will say one thing that really frustrated me, and this I didn't expect, because during the unboxing, I praised the manual click buttons for the trackpad. What I found was because the dial was over here and I was keeping my hands rested here, I kind of wanted to have my hand just kind of relaxed over on this side. Let me pull this down here. So I kind of want to just be like this and I'd edit, you know, and I'll do my click and do all that. But the thing is, you can't do a full like click drag and, you know, make that really work. If you like double click and then you can drag. So honestly, the manual click buttons would probably be my biggest complaint for the Pro Art Studio book. Pro 16 OLED. I just, I wish it was a full clickable trackpad. That would have made the workflow just a little less cumbersome. Still doable and I'm sure I would get used to it, but if I'm gonna be critical of the laptop, I wish it was not the manual buttons, but a clickable trackpad. And that's being really, really picky because you wouldn't believe how much I've enjoyed using this laptop over the past two to three weeks. In my opinion, this is like one of the most innovative laptops in the past couple of years because it's actual practical innovation that improves your workflow and your productivity. Argue with me, comment below what you think is the most innovative thing in the last couple of years. I think it's this. Now, that's one thing I really appreciate about Asus. They are willing to take risks. This was a big risk. I'm sure this cost a lot in R&D. I'm sure it took them a lot of time. Uh, again, the Asus ProArt ZenBook Pro Duo. Okay, that again, took a lot of innovation, a lot of time, it's that dual screen laptop. The Asus Republic of Gamer Flow X13. This is one of the thinnest laptops with a dedicated GPU I've ever personally had the opportunity to review. Has the RTX 3050 Ti, has a Ryzen 9 5900HS, 
packs a punch in a tiny package. This takes time, money, effort, and innovation. And Asus is one of those companies, and this is not an Asus commercial, no brand sponsorship. Asus, if you wanna do a brand sponsorship, let me know. Um, this is not a, a sponsorship. This is just putting respect to where respect is due and they're willing to take the risks, especially for creative professionals. And this is kind of like a midway commercial, but I want you to think about this. All the other laptop companies, including Apple, only focus on the, the hardware and software innovations in regards to the performance. Not a lot of them actually look at what a practical innovation would look like for a creative professional. Asus, if I was wearing a hat, it would be off to you. Really stoked. Now, jumping back into the wheel, one problem that I see would be for left-handed users. I'm not sure how you handle your workflow as a left-handed user, but I always use my less, I always use my predominant hand um, as like my main trackpad or mouse hand. And then I use my non-predominant hand to do the shortcuts and now the dial. Okay, so I don't know if that would throw you off because if you're a left-handed user and you're normally using your trackpad here, well then are you doing this? Or perhaps you now have a mouse you know, and you're using your, your mouse and then you're gonna kind of edit like this, it could be kind of awkward. So keep in mind, if you're a left-handed user, you might have to kind of rethink your workflow to use this laptop. So that could be a ding for you. Okay, another thing to keep in mind is that while you're typing, it doesn't, you don't hit it with your hand. You don't hit the dial with your hand. So you can type, do your thing, and then just kind of slide your thumb over and it's just right there. It's just the placement was spot on. It actually sits even with the uh, keyboard deck. So you're not, so you can actually just slide your hand and it just drifts right over it. Great placement, great depth that it was set into the keyboard deck. Uh, just overall, uh, a really good application. I know I'm spending a lot of time on the dial, but that's what makes this laptop stand out to me. Because the M16 and the G15 are amazing laptops and they have very similar performance to something like this. This is just the creator version. Okay, now while we're on the keyboard deck and all the internals, let's slide the keyboard over and check out the keyboard. So the keyboard is great, it has a medium key travel, soft, quiet, you're not gonna frustrate any neighbors, you know, while you're in your office or you're in a classroom and you're you know, typing notes. It's a nice, quiet keyboard. Uh, the clickable buttons are great, but not in regards to using the dial, in my opinion. I just found the position a little awkward. I felt a little scrunched trying to click over here with the uh, committed left click button. Maybe if you, you know, kind of customized your uh, your trackpad and made this or the center or the right click your main click, you could get away with it. But as it comes from the factory, I just didn't like the manual clicks in relation to the dial. But separately, the manual click is great. Here's a quick audio sample of me using the keyboard and trackpad so you can hear how it sounds. And in regards to the webcam, they have a manual sliding webcam cutoff. And here's a quick sample of the webcam so you can see how that looks and sounds. Here's a quick sample of the Asus ProArt StudioBook Pro 16 OLED webcam and the audio coming out of the webcam microphone as well. And lastly, for the different tests, here's a quick audio sample of the speakers in use so you can hear how the speakers sound on the ProArt StudioBook. Regarding the ports, we have two USB type C's, which are Thunderbolt, an HDMI, our power adapter port, and a USB type A. On the right side, we have our RJ45 network port, USB type A, headphone jack, and the SD card slot. Now, before we jump into the screen flex and opening and closing the lid, if you're curious about the pricing of this laptop or any of the models available, uh, you can head down in the description below and click one of those links. Now, if you do make a purchase with one of those links, I will get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. But of course, that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. Let's go ahead and open the close of the lid real quick and see if you can do that with one hand. It's a pretty stiff hinge. So the one-handed open and close is a little on the stiff side, um, but then let's go ahead and check out the screen flex here. We have a little bit of screen flex. I would say a little to quite a bit uh, on the screen flex landscape. All right, now heading over to the screen we have a full 16 inch screen, slightly larger bezels than something like the M16, um, but you still get that full 16 by 10 aspect ratio, which for me as a creative professional, that's like the new norm. I really appreciate that taller aspect ratio, especially for video editing. You can fit your timeline, fit your um, program monitor and everything and your effects all right in there. It's just such a more roomy screen. It makes the screen feel so much bigger. 
It's amazing we've done 16 by nine aspect ratio for so long. And in regards to the color accuracy, color gamut range and brightness, you can see those coming up on the screen right now. It's a great screen. I have no complaints. For creators, it'll do. It'll do. It'll do donkey. That'll do. That'll do donkey. Now, battery life is not one of the strong suits of this laptop, unfortunately. I think this thing would really be like the perfect package if battery life was slightly better. Uh, as you can see, the results coming up on the screen right now, you have decent battery life on the, you know, video streaming and productivity, you know, scape of things. But then as soon as you get into video editing and photo editing, it just drops off quite a bit. You're going to have about, you know, two to three hours for photo editing and Photoshop or so. And then you're going to have about an hour and a half to two hours for video editing. Now, how I ran the photo editing and video editing battery life benchmarks is I run the Puget Systems Photoshop benchmark on repeat until the battery goes dead. It's a very intense workflow. So I'm guessing you could get a little more battery life out of this laptop, but with that intense workflow, that's the result I achieved. In regards to video editing, I run a Premiere Pro project, 4K project on loop until the battery goes dead. That project has motion graphics, it has music, it has a second B-roll shot. Now, if you're considering buying this laptop on more of a budget and you wanna get it at the kind of the base model with like 16 gigs of RAM and then upgrade later as you need more performance, you can do that. This laptop is upgradable. You can upgrade both RAM configurations and you can upgrade the SSD slots. So that's a big win for this laptop because so many laptops today cough, cough, MacBook Pro, you cannot upgrade once you purchase the laptop. You purchase it, you're done. Something breaks, you're done. So this laptop allows more of an upgrade path uh, throughout the years of owning it. Now regarding the fan noise, that's one area that was good. So looking into the ProArt Creator Hub, you can see you have standard mode, performance mode, and full speed mode. At standard mode, you're gonna get great performance and you're gonna have solid, quiet fan noise, okay, around the 40 decibel range. As you move up into performance mode, you're gonna have about that 45 to 48 decibels of fan noise. And then at full speed, you're gonna enjoy 60 decibels of fan noise. I would not run full speed mode unless you absolutely have to because it increases the performance from standard mode to full speed mode by about 25%. It's a lot of performance, but you usually don't need that much performance when you're doing a video edit or working in Photoshop. It's just kind of overkill. So I would honestly be running this laptop in standard mode or performance mode. Okay, we'll jump fully into the thermals after the benchmark section, which we're gonna get into right now. Now, so you understand what we're working with here. We have the Intel version with the Xeon processor and the RTX A5000 GPU inside of the laptop that is in front of me. So it's the Intel Xeon 11955M and the RTX A5000 GPU. Okay, so this is the, in my opinion, the 3D modeling go-to for this laptop lineup. If you're somebody who's on a little bit more of a budget, I'd recommend the Intel Core or the Ryzen version of this laptop. It's gonna be about two plus thousand dollars cheaper for the Intel Core and the Ryzen version. So you have the Intel i7 11800H with an RTX 3060 or possibly 3070, depending on the options you can find online, and then 16 gigs of RAM. Or you can get the Ryzen 9 5900HX with the RTX 3060 or 3070 and 16 gigs of RAM. The Xeon model comes with 64 gigs of RAM. I think the reason they do that is because a lot of 3D modeling programs really like RAM. RAM, they munch it away. Now, keep in mind that I wasn't able to test all of these different models, but what I did is I took models with the exact same specs and I've put them into the benchmark slide so you can see a general idea on where the other models will land. This is not exact. We can't compare you know, brand to brand performance and get the exact benchmarks, but it'll get you in the ballpark. And then hopefully Asus will send me the uh, i7 core and the Ryzen models and I can officially benchmark those in the studio. But this will at least get you in the range so you know which one you might be in purchase for. All right, so let's get into Cinebench R20 and R23. And as you can see, the Xeon and the RTX Workstation GPU kind of fall down the charts in R20 and R23. But as we move on to Geekbench, single core and multi-core, this one moves quickly back up the charts and gets hand in hand with the Intel Core and the Ryzen CPU. But life is not held in simulated benchmarks. So let's go ahead and check out Autodesk 3ds Max, Autodesk Maya and PTC Creo, as well as SolidWorks. And as you can see, without a doubt, the Xeon processor and the A5000 is where you wanna be if you're 3D modeling. The other ones, come close in some areas, but as a whole, this one dominates, especially in SolidWorks. If you're gonna be a SolidWorks program user or you're using programs that require uh, workstation certified GPUs, 
SolidWorks is one of those programs. Uh, I'm pretty sure Revit is one of those programs as well. I'd recommend getting this laptop. It's gonna dominate the field for you. As you can see, SolidWorks, it wasn't even a question. Okay, next let's move on to After Effects. And After Effects is one of those programs that you can definitely get away with a non-workstation GPU and a non-workstation CPU. So if you want to save some money, you're not going to be doing 3D modeling, I'd go with the Ryzen or the Intel version of this laptop. Now keep in mind, this laptop is scoring a 937 with 64 gigs of RAM versus the other laptops with 16 gigs of RAM. So as you can see, the other laptops, the 16 gigs of RAM didn't make that big of a difference in compared to 16 to 64. So After Effects, not too concerned about RAM um, in this in this situation. Okay, next up, let's look at video editing. If you're going to be video editing in Premiere Pro, I'd recommend the Intel model, especially with Quick Sync. Okay, you can see the export times coming up on the screen right now. Uh, and remember, those are general export times for the other laptops, and this is the specific export times for the StudioBook with the Xeon and the A5000. Now, if you're going to be doing playback in Premiere Pro, again, Intel Quick Sync is going to help out with that a lot. And RAM is also going to help out with that. So upgrading this laptop from 16 to 32 or 64 gigs of RAM will give you significantly less drop frames in playback in Premiere Pro. Now, if you're a DaVinci Resolve user, I'd recommend the Ryzen version of this laptop. Okay, Ryzen is very optimized for DaVinci Resolve, quite a bit more than Intel, especially with export times. Now, they all have good playback as far as the timeline in DaVinci Resolve, but if you want faster export times, Ryzen has historically proved itself better in DaVinci Resolve. Now, as far as the thermals are concerned, I'm only gonna list the thermals on the Xeon processor and the A5000 GPU model I have in front of me. I don't know how well the thermals are gonna handle in this model with the other components, so I'm not gonna put those up there and possibly tar the name of Asus with wrong benchmarks, okay? So what we do for this test is we put the different fan modes on the laptop and then we run an export, 4K export out of Premiere Pro. We're gonna check the export time, the fan noise, and the thermals, okay? This laptop did well at standard and performance mode. Got a little bit warm um, on performance mode, but as you can see, the export times didn't really differ from the different modes. So you can actually run a cool and quiet laptop and still get great performance, which is a big win. Now heading on to Photoshop, Photoshop loves RAM. So that's why we're seeing a 10,047 out of this model with the 64 gigs of RAM and slightly lower scores out of the other models with 16 gigs of RAM. So you gotta think if you upgraded those other models to 32 or 64, you're gonna have equal performance to this model. So know that you can get a slightly more budget-friendly model if you're not gonna be doing 3D modeling and still get great performance out of those two compared to the Xeon processor. I have to say, I would like to keep this laptop. I'd like to own this laptop. The usability and productivity and efficiency, a lot of ease words there, um, really stood out to me. I loved using the dial. I went back and edited earlier without the dial on my regular system and I was like, where's my dial? I really miss my dial. And so know that this is a worthy reason to grab this laptop, especially that you have such similar performance opportunity to something like the M16 and G15, which I consider some of the best video editing laptops on the market right now. Now, in regards to which one you should choose, like I said, if you're a 3D modeler, I would go for the Xeon processor and the A5000 GPU. It's gonna set you back a pretty penny, but most workstation 3D modeling laptops do, like the Z-Books. The Z-Books are always quite steep in price because workstation parts uh, have a bit more of a ticket price on them. Now, for somebody who's video editing in DaVinci Resolve, I'd go with the Ryzen model. For somebody who's video editing in Premiere Pro, I'd go with the Intel model. If you're using After Effects, really either one works. And if you're using Photoshop, either one works. So the choice is yours. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Otherwise, links are ready to make a purchase, likes if this video has brought you some value, and subs if you don't miss out on the future uploads. I'll see you here in the next one.